My name is Karen. I am 24 years old. And when I was 22, I was diagnosed with POTS syndrome. POTS stands for postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, which is why it's shortened to POTS because that is a mouthful. But anyways, it's a form of dysautonomia. Dysautonomia is a dysfunction of your autonomic nervous system. So there's two parts to it, we'll just call them A and B. And usually with someone who has a regular autonomic system, their parts work together to make the body function properly. Those of us with dysautonomia, our bodies work against each other. So things that should formally like breathing, heart rate, temperature, it's all out of whack and our bodies don't function properly. There are many different types of dysautonomia. Um, they do have the same symptoms and they can be anywhere from rapid heart rate, shortness of breath, lightheadedness, dizziness, brain fog, um, I mean tremors, nausea, headaches. I mean these are things that people with dysautonomia deal with pretty much daily and sometimes even fainting. It's very hard for people to understand that don't have it and don't have to live with it or they love affected by it. It is an invisible illness so to everyone we look fine, we look normal. You know clearly I'm really into makeup and I love getting dressed up and you know looking well put together and that and at first glance they would never think that on the inside my body is pretty much fighting itself. Um, right after I turned 21 years old and I kind of started noticing my symptoms of POTS, it started with I was waking up feeling tired most throughout the day and at this time I was bartending maybe four days a week and you know to myself being 21 years old I used to go out partying and I thought I was pretty much untouchable with anything. I then started to get chronic stomach aches and then I was constantly waking up with migraines every morning. I start and every time I went to any kind of general physician they would just tell me you know you're young and you're going through a rough time you're not sure who you are you're probably just having really bad anxiety. Then things started where I was getting stomach pains to the point I couldn't even function and I was, I mean, I was constantly getting dizzy, and anytime I went to a doctor and or in a hospital, they would just tell me I'm fine, all of my lab results look good, and just send me. Now let's fast forward, I don't know, maybe like five months. I'm still going through this at this point. I had been in and out of hospitals, doctors, specialists. I've had pretty much every major test done and I was feeling alone and people in my life started to not believe me and thought that I just needed help. I ended up quitting my job because standing up I would have heart pains and rapid heart rate and foggy all the time and I just remember one day my sister and I went to Walmart and I literally just passed out in the parking lot. My heart just shot through the roof and I just passed out. I went to the hospital and they literally told me that I had a panic attack and that I needed help. And after this, I didn't, I mean, I just sat on my mom's couch. I moved back home and I didn't do anything. I sat there and cried because no one could figure out what was wrong with me. I had been to every kind of specialist that you could think of. I had every test done. I mean, I had EEGs, CAT scans, MRIs, and nothing was being found. I pretty much went through this six months out of being old, and now let's fast forward to November when I was 22. I passed out for the first time and I kind of had seizure-like activity and then it kept happening and it just 
increased, I would constantly, you know, it started once here and there, and then it turned into a couple times a week, and then before, I was just standing up and passing out. The point where I was just literally standing up and passing out, my mom and dad were like, okay, what do we do? It's like, clearly something's wrong. They took me downtown to three of the major hospitals I was in for, I think it was a week, and they did very extensive testing on me and they actually diagnosed me with something called somatoform disorder which is pretty much linked with stress and I guess activity and passing out. Clearly the most well-known hospitals couldn't do anything for me and I was just fed up at this point. Um, I, everyone was against me and I was the only one who believed that something was truly wrong and I would just cry from the moment I woke up until the moment I went to bed. It was full for my family. My mom lost her job because of literally sleeping day in and day out in the hospitals with me. And I was just fed up one day and I just didn't want to be And I'm glad I'm here. Um, my family ended up taking me to inpatient, and I was there for four days, and I just, I'm just, I want answers, I want answers, I want to be home, I want to find a doctor that believes me, I want my friends and family back, I feel so alone. Sure, after coming home, I kind of had an attitude of, I'm going to prove everyone wrong, so... I was still passing out as soon as I stood up. I was crawling up the stairs. I had to be attended at all times, whether I was shower eating, going to the bathroom, and I didn't tell anyone I was going to take a shower. I wanted to try and prove to someone that what was really going on was happening. I ended up taking a shower, stood up, I passed out in the shower, I ended up having a seizure, and my blood pressure dropped extremely, extremely low. Um, they rushed me over to Christ Hospital, which is the closest trauma center near me, because I did hit my head really hard. There for 12 days, I saw every doctor in every department, and finally they wanted to admit me into a long-term, you know, inpatient facility. And I just wanted one more opinion. I begged my doctor. So they had the head of neurology, who I'd never met, and he ended up doing a tilt table test for me. And that is when I got diagnosed with POT syndrome. My goal for this video isn't for people to feel sorry for me. It's to spread awareness to something that's so rare. And I want to raise $5,000 to help with the research for dysautonomia. So go down below. Check out the link and share the love. Thanks, guys.